Good evening, race fans. Welcome into race 10 for the LSRL Xfinity season here at Kansas Speedway for the regular season finale. And as always, here with my co-commentator, Art, tonight, how we doing? I'm doing great. Really happy to see, you know, the final eight or the eight going into the playoffs. Eric Shields is on the outside looking in. He looked fast in practice. Yeah, we got a tight points battle for that final transfer spot. And tonight, two laps of qualifying to settle it, to set the grid, 130 laps to, to duke it out on track. Stage break at lap 40. The 70% fuel capacity gives these drivers an estimated run of 35 to 38 laps. So we're going to have to see a little bit of strategy come into play. Five total tire sets, zero fast repairs, and three green-white checkers tonight. Uh... All coming into play potentially, and I'd be inclined to point out to the viewers that Ryan Tiller has eaten at 50 chicken wings in under 20 minutes. He told me to point that out at the top of the show, and we will gladly do so. But let's go ahead and get you right in to the on-track action as qualifying is underway. One of the guys outside looking in needs a big night. Would be Casey Brown needs pretty much everything to go his way. Ryan Tiller currently holding on to that eighth and final spot. He sits ninth, now eighth on his second lap. Sean Anderson puts in a very nice lap time. On second, Jared Lindsay, a four-time winner this year, already locked into the playoffs. He heads out. On his out lap, Joshua Lawton, last week's winner at Dover, looked quick in practice. In fact, he was the only man in the 30.7s. And that thing looks loose at a turn number four. As he crosses the start-finish line, and the 40 machine will go. P3, Jonathan Mazella on top of the timing charts. Cody B. Johnson slots into P12. And let's go on board here with Jared Lindsay. Randy Arms also coming down to complete his second lap. Does not improve. And it's tight at the top, though 30.97 has it. A little bit of a crack of the throttle there, a little tight through the middle of the corner, but holding a steady wheel. Cody B. Johnson goes fifth on his second lap. Jared Lindsay slots into 17th on his first lap, though. But it's all about keeping that momentum up for the second lap. A little crack of the throttle there. But he was mostly able to hold it on the high side. And with just over 30 seconds remaining, he'll have plenty of time to get the lap in. Through turn number four. A little bit loose on exit, but it should be okay. Looks like a decent lap. You'll want to put it on pole if possible. He'll do P5. And it's tight at the top. We have four guys on a 31.02. Joshua Lawton, Sean Anderson, Jared Lindsay, and Cody B. Johnson. And then another... Half a tenth back to Chris Pinder and Landwehr. So this is a tight field. And as qualifying has now come to an end, let's go ahead and show you the points as they entered tonight. And currently, the of the guys, you know, on the outside looking in, Pinder qualified the highest. He's 16, point back, 16 points back of Ryan Tiller. Like, if he can get himself some good stage, you know, if he turns this qualifying pace into race pace, we could be seeing a new top eight. Yeah, absolutely. Stage point's going to be at a premium tonight, and that's the battle we're looking at. Ryan Tiller, Chris Pinder, Eric Shields, and then with an outside chance of pointing their way in, Corey Blevins, Tony Scarbo, and then everyone on down, Casey Brown would need a win to lock themselves in. But that is what we're looking at. Blevins isn't even here. He was definitely in the fight. We're just not able like, to. Yeah. He, he might have had a win to be in, but yeah, he's not here. So it's going to be between Tiller, Pender, and Shields. Three way battle. Michael Davis should be safe at 195. Just has to start the race. That is the championship battle we're watching. And then at the other end, at the top of the table, Jared Lindsay, Schwartz, and Landwehr. The 10 points separating them from a regular season championship. Tied at the top, but MoFlo Racing 1, 2, and 3. So we'll look for some strategy to come into play there. And we'll be keeping our eye on it all night long. A 
Jonathan Mazella on pole here this evening. We've got a little bit of a rise driver detail overlay as well. So you can see here he's got two top fives on the season looking for his first win. It'll be easier to identify the drivers that we're talking about and give you some quick information on their season at hand. So I was finally able to, to input that in and we're pretty happy about it. Well, while we wait for these drivers to grid up, do you want to make some picks to win? This is going to be an interesting one. we got a new name on pole, his first of the season. Sean Anderson with his best qualifying effort of the season. Jared Lindsay, who's been setting the league on fire the last couple of weeks, is P5. Your previous week's winner is P3. And Randy Arms, always a present threat for the podium, is in the mix as well. So this is probably one of the tougher ones we've seen. But uh, give me Joshua Lawton to go back-to-back. -back. Not playoff eligible, but he's going for wins. And he's going to get it done here this evening. Well, I'm contractually obligated to not pick P2. So I'm going to, you know, I'm taking Jared Lindsay. He's coming back with a vengeance. And P5. But if you're Ryan Tiller in 14th, you got Eric Shields and Pinder ahead of you. So a little nervous off the bat, potentially. Could lead to some mistakes trying to be aggressive early. See there, Pinder's got four top tens. Tiller with five. Tiller has had an impressive month of August to get himself back in contention. He was outside looking in. But it's all to play for here this evening. Regular season championship up for grabs. Final spot the playoffs up for grabs, and it's going to be settled here after 130 laps this evening. 22 drivers ready to go for it, and Jonathan Mazzella will lead us down, and we are green. Mazzella not getting that great of a start, and Rainy Arms has a nose ahead going into one. Look to use that momentum off of turn number two. If you're in clean air, the place you want to be is the bottom, but try and... You probably want to go around the top and use that momentum and side by side down the back straightaway already. Sean Anderson slots into third ahead of Lawton. And it's still side by side for the race lead. Great shot there from the 15 Sunny D machine at the line. Dead heat practically, but give it to Randy Arms, lead lap number one, get a crucial bonus point. He's still in the mix. If everything went his way. On the back straightaway, they go still side by side. Randy with half a car length, trying to make it a whole car length into turn number three. Cody B. Johnson is down seven spots here in the opening lap and a half. Make it eight, maybe even nine. I think there was some contact with the ball. He's trying to Not fight it back. Tough. There's a massive gap opened up between our top four and then like fifth place. But look at Pinder, though. He's getting himself right into the mix. He knows he needs to be aggressive. Maybe go out and lead a lap if possible and close that gap because that's a free bonus point. Also keeping a 0x, three bonus points there. So there's a lot of ways for guys to accumulate points. And this 24 being very aggressive in the opener. Sean Anderson not even going to fight it. And Chris Pinder, your biggest mover right now. Up into your top three. Eric Shields up two spots into seventh. And Ryan Tiller still holding place in 13th position. Kind of stuck in that hornet's nest, three wide, Demian way up the racetrack. Everyone trying to make moves back here inside and outside of the top ten. I don't honestly be pretty scared. This is a lot more bunched up in this mid-pack than you would really expect it to be. Like, if you're involved in a caution, no fascia pairs, like, it's going to be a hard night. Yeah, Tiller's staring at three wide right in front of him. Not saying I'd want to back out of it, but I definitely wouldn't want to be in it. You know you got a stage break coming up at lap 40 where a lot of guys probably won't be able to make it on fuel unless they do some aggressive savings, so why not get yourself out of this pack or at least be at the tail end of it and try and draft and, and maybe do the alternate and get you some stage points. You can make it to the end. But I think that's what Joshua Lawton's doing. He's down six positions. We'll go on board with him. The winner last week at Dover. I think that's his strategy. I mean, so is Jared Lindsay. He's down eight. They're both up there on that high side, just letting cars go around on the bottom. 
And they, oh, look at how slow the 40 was off the corner. But yeah, guys on different strategies. You see the 10 kind of hanging back. The 40 was hanging way back. Schwartz, we know he loves an alternate strategy. Let's go on board with him into turn number one. We're doing pretty good tonight. Got a lot going on, and we're excited to call all the action. I think Schwartz is definitely saving down in 19th, and he is. He is cutting the car off and coasting right from the get-go. So Schwartz trying to save enough fuel and hoping that a caution does not come out. Now, Cody B. Johnson doing the same thing. He did it from the drop of the green flag, so he might be able to the first one to go back on attack. God that Dean told me he was going to do this paint scheme. It is a General Lee inspired paint scheme for the Canadian government. <laughs> Yes, we stream on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays. Those are our three leagues that we broadcast. Thank you, Zach. Don't know why Dean's thing says that. That's not what we had it set to, but he must have overwritten our code somehow. I think he entered that in himself, but it's supposed to say LSRL. He's got eight top tens. He's got some pretty impressive consistency this season. He comes on late in the races. It looks like the top three aren't really concerned about saving at the moment. They've opened up a three second gap back to fourth. And they're just banking on a splash and go being the quicker way around the racetrack at this current time. Look at Ryan Tiller with everyone else saving. He is right up there in the mix. He has now cracked the top five ahead of Eric Shields, but still behind Pinder. At this current rate, he would make it in anyways. I think Splash Go might be faster. You look at guys like Randy Arm, Jonathan Mazela, even Pinder, they're three seconds ahead of P4, four seconds ahead of P5. And it just goes on from there. And this is only 11 laps into a run. And Cody B. Johnson is 11 and a half seconds behind. So we'll see how this plays out. There's still a lot of battling going on in the midfield. right there in the mix. But we'll see. Let's go back on board here with Cody B. Johnson. And he is still saving. So he doesn't think he's saved enough yet. Thirteen laps into it, though. He's not even halfway through the stage, so... 20 laps maybe and then go on and attack for the last 20. Be interesting to see how he splits it up. There's a lot of cars here single file. That's Ryan Tiller back to Dean Clavett, 5th to 12th. Jared Lindsay still right there as well. So there's not a whole lot of separation. Everyone just kind of keeping each other in check. Jared Lindsay, your four-time winner this season. Currently runs 13th, though, but we know what his strategy is. He wants to make it to the end of Stage 1 and get some bonus points, potentially to lock up the regular season championship. to see how Pinder makes this work because we've seen the drivers you know at the back saving we see the two out front just kind of running away Pinder in his own little space right now 
see how he can make it off, you know, towards the end of the stage. Yeah, absolutely. We haven't seen a consistent. I'm trying to think of the word here for it, but either way, Pinder's doing a nice job right now. He's sticking to his strategy. If he's keeping with the leaders. Let's Didn't see. Didn't started to push him though. Yeah, he's caught up. He's caught, closed down that gap. Wonder if Pinder started to back off a little bit. And he's trying to save fuel now. He was kind of the opposite attack for the first 20 laps. And then the second 20, he'll start to, to slow it back. Now we got a battle for third, though. See how much of a fight Pender actually puts on here. Doesn't sound like he's aggressively saving, but he's definitely backing up the corners a little bit. He'll fall back to fourth. Demian, he's the biggest mover. He'll try and draft off of him. There's another two seconds or so back to Ryan Tiller and Eric Shields. This is one of the battles to watch for the transfer. further back. Everyone keeping each other honest right now. Everyone just trying to get to the stage one way or another. Back up front though, look at Randy. He's under pressure from Mazella. Lead changed off the start and the 41 machine wants it back. Battle for the race lead here. Looks like Randy could be doing kind of a similar thing going aggressive early and then backing off in the second half of the run. But they're running a couple tenths quicker than guys that are saving. Adam Kilday's in the 33, so is Schwartz. These are guys that are back here saving fuel. 33 flat for Schwartz last time by. Randy a 32.8, so they're still running a little bit quicker. So we'll see how this ends up long term. I still feel like when it comes down to the actual pit stop, they'll be able to get on and off faster than my other... Like, Shorts is 13 seconds behind. They'll be able to get on, get a little bit of fuel, and get out. And Shorts might have passed them, but Shorts still might be having a save. Yeah, the fuel run is estimated at 35 to 38 laps. Obviously, they can extend that with some aggressive saving, which they're doing right now. That's what we were told pre-race by a couple guys. Anywhere, 35, 36, 37. So they're going to be short, and these guys are going to have to save. Dave, Dale does not like saving. <laughs> not num. Oh, there they are actually two wide. Casey Brown getting past. Landwehr starting to move up a little bit. Just a trail of uh, drafting right now. A bunch of cars trying to save fuel. Overall, still just single file. I wonder what's the earliest we could see someone actually come down and take, you know, fuel and potentially tires. Come down early, take tires and fuel, lose a little bit of time, but gain it, you know, running them all back down. His spot back. <laughs> I 
I believe tires should matter. In the in the long run, they very much will. That's why I believe, like, if someone comes down early and takes tires and fuel, I think they could still get a top five. Currently, fall off has been about a second and a half, almost two seconds. But then again, we, we don't really know because a lot of these drivers have been saving since the drop of the green flag. Yeah, like Randy Arms, his second lap, he ran a 31-0, currently running 33-3s. So a good two seconds. It's like if Randy or Jonathan Mazzella, you know, come down, they take four. Like, they, they're going to lose some time, but they will get back up into, like, the top five. I, I very strongly see it happening if they go, you know, full throttle. So something interesting to know, like you said, they're going to lose time, but they'll get it back after the stage because guys like Schwartz, Cody B. Johnson, Lott, and Lindsay that have been saving this entire time, they're going to pit at, after the stage break. And guys that come down and pit, they'll get back their track position. They just won't have the stage points. And honestly, they have five sets of tires. One on, four in the pit. So take one now, take one at the stage, take one to the end of the run. Yeah, absolutely. You can afford to be a little bit aggressive here. Or just don't, don't even bother with it. Just take your splash and go, and then just take tires at the stage, but then you kind of reset everything and you lose the track position. So it'll be interesting to see what these guys at the front decide to do. 33-2 last lap for Randy Arms, 33-1 for Cody B. Johnson way back here, so he might be picking it up just a little bit. Mazzella ran a 33-1. Lot in a 33 flat, as Land is Jared Lindsay. 33-3 for short, so he's still not convinced that he has enough fuel saved. Let's go on board with him here. He is 12 and a half seconds off the lead, and he's still saving, so... Cody B. Johnson was right back there in 20th, battling with Schwartz at one point, but now he's started to go forward, as has Lawton and Lindsey. Sean Anderson started out up front, now he started saving. So this is just a big old, how much fuel can you save, because you don't want to run out trying to pit under yellow. And ruin your race there. Let's go on board here with our race leader into turn number one and see what he's got going on. There is 10 laps to go till the stage. And now he's saving, so he's taking the opposite approach. Saving late in the run. But look at this midfield here. If one guy runs out of fuel and doesn't realize it quick enough, it could get a little messy. Multiple car incident, though. But Ryan Tiller is doing exactly what he needs to do in that 23 machine. He's getting some solid stage points ahead of Eric Shields and close enough to Pinder that it wouldn't matter. Although he's in the process of losing a spot to Landwehr. So we shall see. Dean Clavitt has decided to make up. Oh, he's caught, caught the wall there with the right rear a little bit. But Kansas always delivers a good show. And it's not surprising that we're seeing that here with a lot of cars grouped up together. A good strategy. Kansas is a great track. And I'm glad it's closing out the regular season here. Got a little two wide action there between Lawton and Michael Davis, Lindsay and Dean Clavitt also two wide. Got to be careful here. You don't want to throw away the regular. Let's take a look here. The relay might get a bit messy, but it's fine. Lindsay came in tied with Schwartz. Right now, Lindsay has it, but he's losing out slightly to Landwehr. And then Randy Arms, he was way further back. But if this result holds with the stage points and another good finish. Could make some noise at this. Those 10 points would get him right into 279 and be in contention. But he has to save enough fuel to get to the stage. As they run, Ryan Tiller would be the eighth and final spot. 
And I believe... I'm trying to think if Landwehr at the current moment, I think with the stage points he would come out ahead. Over Schwartz and Lindsay, even though he was 10 points back. I mean, he's still moving up. He's got Pender in his sights now. Yeah, right now, he's getting five stage points to Jared Lindsay's one, so he gets, cuts it in four, so he goes from 10 to six. But if he gets around Pinder, he gets the five-point advantage back. But Jared Lindsay trying to go two for one here on the front stretch. And close that gap down some more. Samuel Demian is the first one to blink. We'll go on board here. We'll actually do the spotter zoom here. Got some right rear damage. We'll see if he goes four tires and fuel or if it's just a splash and go. Don't see the jack going up at all. And it's just a splash and go for the 21 machine. We'll see if anyone else doesn't think they can make it. But look at this though. Jared Lindsay got around three cars in the last two laps. Let's take a look here. While Damien was pitting, it's a great run off of turn number four. Passes the 56 and the 88. Some good stuff there. And now he's gotten around Eric Shields. Now Landwehr is pushing. He gets around Kinder. Kinder almost into the wall using every inch of the racetrack. And now he's side by side with Ryan Tiller, 23 and 24, battling for the eighth spot in the playoffs. And look at the pack behind him who have turned it on. They're charging late. And the guys out front are starting to save. Lindsay about to make it a two for one going around the outside there. Pinder going low. That might hamper the 23's momentum, but he drives it in super deep. It'll compromise his corner exit. 18 will go around. Jonathan Mazela's coming in. Everyone else surely thinks they can make it. Lindsay's pulling a train around these guys. Joshua Lawton, Dean Clavitt, Sean Anderson. Eric Shields and Casey Brown just a little bit further back. Like, we'll be asking the question, is Ryan Tiller even going to get stage points at this point? And he's got... Hey, look at Pinder. I think he's coming in Ooh, this Pinder. lap. Randy's coming in. He could not save enough. That puts Nathaniel Landwehr in the catbird seat. The second over Jared Lindsay. Chris Pinder in as well. He They could not make it to the stage. Came in on lap 39. Let's go on board here with Landwehr. He's not saving. Either it's Jared Lindsay or Lawton or Sean Anderson or Dean Clavitt. Ryan Tiller is still saving. We got a complete lap 40. Get back around. Schwartz almost into the back of Lucas Reed. He is desperate to make up spots here late in the stage. Don't know if it'll be enough over this 58. He was aggressively saving. Back up front. Randy Arms will be the first one to lap down. He should be able to unlap himself. Mazella took tires. But Demian and Randy, it was a splash and go. Pinder is still on pit road, so I think he sped. And that is heartbreaking. As the That's yellow is out, so everyone makes it. Except for Randy Arms, Samuel Demian, and Jonathan Mazella. And Chris Pinder with a pit road speeding penalty. Travis DeLeon running out has to come in. But who can make it around under yellow? Randy will be the lucky dog. And Damien and Mazella will take the wave around. And Pinder is finally back out. Travis is back out. I don't think he'll go a lap down. And everybody's in. Looks like they all make it. So solid stage points for Ryan Tiller. Everybody actually made it. And Tiller might be out coming to pit road. Is it? 
Looks like there was a little bit of a gap there. But Landwehr wins the stage. Let's remind you of what the points look like as they came in. He was 10 points back. And he has closed that gap. Now it's on from here. Ryan Tiller saying playoffs. Has he locked himself in? Nope. He's got to be feeling pretty good about it. Got some extra stage points to help cushion it. Chris Pinder sped onto pit road. He still has to worry about Eric Shields? We still have to worry about Eric Shields, I believe. But Pinder put himself in a world of hurt with that penalty. I think he'll be the only car one lap down, though, but he, he should be two down. Unfortunately. Yeah, Arms is your lucky dog. The Mien and Mazella took the wave around. And Scott Kelly is still on pit road in the 89 machine. Randy Arms coming down to top back off. Let's go talk to your stage winner. Here with Nathaniel Landwehr in the 66, a solid stage win keeps you in contention for the regular season championship. How close was it on fuel there? Uh, I had about half a gallon left. I I thought it was going to be a lot tighter than it was. but Yeah, more people were making it. it than I was expecting, but now you put yourself squarely in that battle with Schwartz and Lindsay. What do you think you have now when we get back for the second stage? Uh, Going to hope we're going to have enough to get it up to the front, but we'll see here. It's going to be a good race between me and Jared. Absolutely. Uh, got some guys in contention, and it's going to be a good show, but uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, and good luck out there. Yep, thank you. Real quick while we get ready to go back to green, let's quickly get a word in from tonight's amazing sponsors that helped put on this amazing league week in and week out. Massive shout out to Gridfinder, Butt Kicker, Wilder Graphics, Sim 3D, Sim Speed Shop, and Sim Racer Hub for all the work that they help with the LSRLs. We get back to green flag racing here. Jared Lindsay with a great start. Joshua Lawton and Nathaniel Land, where all the contenders back up front. Happening again. He is going. Here, Lindsay has clean air. That could be dangerous for everybody. Looks like we had a car on the wall further back. I think it was the 14 of Kilday. Travis DeLeon getting him into the back of the 14 machine. Let's back that up and take a quick look at it. Trying to make the most of the fresh tires. There's just a, a couple cars getting into the back, into the wall there. Getting into the back of each other. Randy Arms now down in P15. Oh, Demian wasn't able to get a wave around. 
So that puts Pinder even further behind the eight ball. So if we get a caution, it's the Yin next up in line. Yeah, this big thing is if we get a caution, there's a very real chance we go all, you know, 80 laps out from here. But how about this, Joshua Lawton? Getting to the inside of Jared Lindsay while we're looking at some of that scrap further back. And he wants the race lead. He's not going to let him get away. Travis DeLeon's back on pit road. Nathaniel Landwehr is right in the mix as well. And they are side by side for the race lead. Let's go on board here with the 66 of Landwehr. Forty trying to take the shortest way around the racetrack. 18 trying to get the momentum off of the high side. They're still side by side going at each other. 40 driving in real deep though, mid corner off. And he'll take the spot away. So Lawton trying to go back to back. Sixty-six closing in as well. Randy up four spots since the restart, and he's stuck in this hornet's nest. We saw some guys saving fuel under the yellow. Knowing they can go 40 laps to try and go from 40 to... Trying to think what gets them in that fuel window. Be lap 90 if they can somehow stretch it even further with a couple laps under yellow, but I don't think anyone's going to get there. I still think we're looking at a two-stop race here. Very well could be, especially with the amount of tires that they have. Could, you know, just come in just to take tires anyway. Look at Randy Arms being very aggressive here. So I think if you're committed to that two-stop strategy, there's no point in saving fuel whatsoever. You just try and go as fast as you can. I hope race car drivers just think, let's go as fast as we can. But if you're somehow trying to get it to a one-stop, you are going to be very conservative on both runs and try and get to lap 90 and then be very conservative to the end and hope that the time on pit road is longer than the time you lost saving fuel. So we will see how it goes. Lawton is way out in front now. And Lindsay is Back down to P4. Far. This is disrespect about my food habits. Two nights in a row, I won't stand for it. You see you've been volunteered to eat toast on stream next Monday? I like toast. It's, again, it's not even that I didn't like wheat toast, or white toast. It's just that I've had wheat toast for so long, I didn't think anything of it. <laughs> I love syrup. I bet you do. Okay. Look at Michael Davis here in the 57 machine. He's up six spots. Short's up 15, although that was by design, starting in the back trying to save fuel and stay out of the way. And look, just look at this hornet's nest. That's Randy Arms in sixth. You got Pinder, who's a lap down, but just ahead of him is Mazella. And he's in 16th, so it goes back about 10 cars, all vying for position. Let's go on board here with the 15 machine of Sean Anderson. He was one of the ones saving early on. Doesn't look like he's doing that anymore. One of the best battles to follow throughout the night is going to be the Ryan Tiller Eric Shields battle. Currently up five spots ahead of Ryan Tiller. With those stage points that Tiller earned, it pretty much cancels out to nothing right now. The points would stay the same. And Ryan Tiller would be in. We know he's got speed. He charged up late in the, that first stage. Just saving his tires potentially, but right now Tiller's in a great spot. No need to panic. And just with five top tens on the season, looking to get in at that eighth seed and sneak in. It was a championship four last season. Not the consistency he would have wanted. A lot of it was outside of his control, though. But 
even when involved in incidents, he would still keep at it and try and minimize the damage, and that could be very important here over the next half of this race as he tries to get in. Eric Shields doing all he could. Chris Pinder was having a heck of a race. He was showing the most speed I think we've seen all season. You can definitely tell he was putting in the time, but just a, a pit road penalty can end up putting the 24 out of sequence for the time being. We know how clean these guys race, so unlikely that we have three cautions in the second half of this race.